welcome to the NBS Show Review and Discussion Podcast. I am your host, Roman Sanzo. Joining me today is Silver Quill. Color is missing from the world. Prime suspects include one Mr. Murky and one Mr. Gurky. Murky Gurky? Actually, I believe it was Lurky. Yes, Mr. Lurky. I've just been headed a correction. Also, I've been fired. Goodbye, everybody. Oh, man, you can work for Fox News then. I still have a soul, thank you. <laughs> also joining us today is the Terra. I don't think they can go on, Norman. I've lost my color! Oh wait, that's my natural color. <laughs> yeah, being a black OC does mute the point of having colors. Yeah, the only color I have is on the mane and the tail. And didn't we have this conversation about your OC being devoid of light or devoid of colors and that? And Silver just came in saying that black is a color? Yeah, I remember we had a conversation about that. Yeah, yeah. It was it long ago? Yes, I put together enough build black at my day job that I could say it is a color. (laughs) But anywho, in today's episode, we are going to review the animated special based on My Little Pony Friendship is Magic, the My Little Pony Rainbow Road Trip. So, in this episode, or in the special, the main six travel to Hope Hollow, where Rainbow Dash has been invited to be the guest of honor at the Rainbow Festival, but they discover that the entire town and the ponies in it have been drained of color. Hmm, that is interesting. But before we go get into it, uh, first impressions are in order. And Silver, what do you think? Well, this one's a really fun has a ton of characters and uh, each of the main six gets to to show their stuff. But at the same time, it's a, it's amazing how quick you forget about it. I hate to say it that way, but it's, it's true. It's just sort of there and gone like the wind. You know what, man? I, I agree with your statement there. And the thing is, um, I almost forgot that this exists the only thing, sorry, the only reason why I can remember it is because I have it in a file ready to review whenever we want to review this, and I'll I'm shocked that hey this exists oh yeah this exists yeah, and I I need to review this soonish, and the most memorable thing for me about this one is the gift that was about when Twilight was. F- Showing off her rainbow wings. You remember that gif? That was pretty much the highlight of it. The main draw. They made a toy out of it, for crying out loud. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and that's the thing. Like That was the only thing that I remember it from. Like That was the most quote-unquote memorable part. Not the movie, by the way. It was just that gif. Oh, you're going to make me quote the cookie monster now. Me think it pronounced gif. <laughs> No, I know how to annoy you. Uh, Anyway, uh, Tara, what about you? I mean, I kind of also forgot about this. I mean, I knew it was a thing because the ending song, I think it's called Living in Color or something like that. I I feel like it's a catchy song and they sing about all these different colors. I mean, uh, uh, there is one part that Rarity sings in the song I find a bit offensive, you know, but that's a discussion for later as we get into this. But it was decent. Just like... uh, you know what? That's a bit forgettable. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It, it, this seems to be the theme with this one. And uh, as for me, this episode was a lot of fun. It has a lot of interesting characters. The theme was awesome. Yet somehow I forgot all about it. Like I mentioned before earlier on when Silver was talking, this was almost forgettable. And the thing is, it was not that bad. This was pretty good. It was pretty awesome. But I don't remember much out of this. And one fun fact about this movie is that uh, the special used the same animation style as My Little Pony, the movie. Uh, It was added to Discovery Family Go mobile app on June 30th, 2019. But was removed on August 3rd. I got no idea why. And yeah, uh, this is the first time that... Boulder Media was working on My Little Pony. I think there's more, but that statement could have been wrong. Yes, but still, um, this was what Boulder Media could, um, is doing. And Boulder Media is a company in Ireland, if I remember right? I think so. Did you see any leprechauns working on this? Ah, 
Rita me go around. The stereotypes are supposed to be funny. <laughs> oh, laddie, don't you know? Hey, to don't you know? Uh, yeah, it's Dublin, Ireland. They're, they're the company there. And you know what? They, they, their heritage has been... Uh, sorry, they have been working on a lot of other movie or shows. Uh, one of the shows that they did, I'm just going to blast through what I see here, is Foster's Home for Imaginary Friends, El Tigre, The Adventure of Many, Many Riviera, uh, what else? Uh, Wonder Over Yonder, Gojetters, Little Pet Shop. A world of our own, Transformers Cyberverse, DC Superhero Girl, and My Little Pony Pony Life. Yes. Mm. So all the stuff that people give a hard time for. I, mm, I, mm, I, <laughs> um, they did. They also did Amazing World of Gumball. I have not seen Amazing World of Gumball, so yeah, still would give him a hard time. <laughs> Just because, uh, man. Oh, uh, they <laughs> also did the Equestria Girl Summer Shorts. Oh, so they're the ones who put the nail in the coffin. Oh, <laughs> oh, I see how it is. How is that bad? bet? Uh, but it's the, it's the nail, Norman. It's the nail in the coffin. Oh, boy, oh, boy. <laughs> you, you will never see another sunset shimmer as a result. Well, there is always season 10 in the comics. One can hope that she uh, that she'll be there somehow. I don't know. I just feel people are still crying over it as I drop my sound box. <laughs> um, well, I mean, if anything, she'll just probably randomly appear and disappear, like in I believe the last comic we did. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah that, that, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh. That, that sounds like screaming. <laughs> there you go. Yes. But, but anywho, but anywho, uh, if you guys have not watched this special yet, pause here and go do so. Welcome back. Hope you enjoyed this special. So let's, well, um, start off the special with the beginning. Um, I'm just going to go through this uh, as quick as possible because uh, the intro is just the intro song. Um, not the My Little Pony song, but... The uh, Rainbow Road Trip song. I, I think it's called Rainbow Road Trip. Yes. Genius. It starts off with Rainbow Dash getting a letter uh, inviting her to uh, Hope's Hollow to celebrate or, or to be the guest of honor at the Rainbow Festival over there. And Rainbow Dash invites all of her friends. Uh, they are Rarity, Fluttershy, Twilight. Pinkie Pie and also Applejack. So they uh, head to the middle of town and, um, well, go to Hope's Hollow via Air Balloon. One thing I like to note here is that the animation style for the movie is using the, what should I call this, uh, movie style. And we get to see uh, some of the characters here be in their movie style like Big Mac, Granny Smith, the CMC's Twilight and sorry, um, Starlight and Trixie and also our very lovable uh, Muffin Mare. Even more shocking for me is Party Favor. Party Favor? Yeah, Party Favor is there. Party Favor. You mean, um, what? what is he though? I forgot. He was one of the fallback four in Starlight's Old Town. He was the one that would make the balloon binoculars and the balloon bridge. Uh, and in and in My Little Pony the movie, he lamented Brian, oh. the crushed, the crushed uh, balloon animal. Ah, uh, yeah, I I see him here now. He's talking to Elo or Vera. I, I forgot. I think it's Allo. I think. Mm. I think it is. Uh, well, I'll, I'll Allo it. Yeah. <laughs> All right. But anywho, um, we see here that um, Pinkie Pie and Rainbow Dash are racing to get to the balloon and see who gets there first. But unfortunately for them, they came in quote-unquote last. Well, almost last because Twilight is the last one coming in. Uh, we see that uh, Twilight arrives to the hot air balloon with Spike in tow carrying her very heavy bags. So I'm going to pause here. No, yes, no. I, I think I should continue on a bit because there's a few things that I can go through. So anyway, um, Twilight hops onto the balloon with her bag, but the balloon doesn't go up that much because, hey, um, it's overweight. 
And the thing that is overweight is Twilight's um, bag full of reports that needs to be marked. Haha. <laughs> ah, Twilight, you workaholic. And with that, the balloon heads off to Hope's Hollow. And I'm going to pause here. Silver, what do you think? I will say that uh, one of the things I most enjoyed is seeing Opal get stuffed into a bag and having her really <laughs> kick the door closed. Uh, she's usually the, the tormentor. So I feel a certain mm, visceral pleasure at her being the tormentee. Yes. Oh, Silver, one thing you should know about cats is they have they, they do revenge. Look, all I know is cats don't dance. Oh, oh I see what you did there. Thank you. <laughs> this is a fun little introduction. It's just, in, it's, if you're, I think about this, if you were a parent uh, just getting into this with your kid, you might not know who these characters are, and this is a pretty effective way of just reintroducing them. But I guess because Rainbow and Pinky have perhaps the most screen time of this opening, they're the ones you get to know first. I do find it kind of funny that as they do a race towards the balloon, Pinky diverts several times, just going in circles, and uh, and still catches up to Rainbow. So like, hang on, did they just say Pinky's faster than Rainbow Dash? Yeah, obviously. Did you not remember uh, in earlier episodes where Pinky always finds Rainbow Dash? Ah, but that's the cartoon logic where she's just there. She's a teleporter. This one, she's going Sonic the Hedgehog, uh, speedy blur lines. And still, so, bro, you don't even see her hooves. Next thing, she's going to be down in a vegan chili dog. <laughs> oh, yes, yes. Still awesome, though. Well, I think Rainbow should sue. It's like, this is slander! I was robbed! <laughs> uh, topical! I see what you did there. Honestly, that wasn't that it wasn't even what I was conscious of, but it applies. <laughs> uh, boys. I could see Rain, Rainbow going, the, the only reason she wants is cheated. I've demanded an audit of the of the feat that I uh, traversed. Uh, an excellent research, the greatest ever. <laughs> oh boy! But still, um, when you mentioned about intro, yeah, um, this is a good intro. We get introduced to all the characters in a timely manner. We we, we get to know who is who. That's awesome. But uh, I'm gonna hold my tongue for a bit. Um, Tara, you got anything to say? It's a cute little intro with uh, Rainbow Dash and Pinky getting to the balloon and they're racing. Although, yes, I do have questions about Pinky being able to catch up with Rainbow Dash. And like Silver said, too, if you're, like, say, a parent that's just getting into the show or, you know, if it's your first time in general watching this, you might not end- understand some of these background characters or the connections between each character. Like, I know at the beginning, when uh, you see Ponyville, you see Lyra and Bon Bon just walking together. You see the butterflies and you see, uh, I guess we'll call them Muffins because that's her official name, as they say. Mm-hmm. But, you know, Debbie will still live on. <laughs> <laughs> but as you can see that as she goes through the, um, the I can say, the group of butterflies, they form a shape of a heart because, you know, it shows that Lyra and Bon Bon like each other. And it's like, yeah, there's a heart right there. Now, some people may notice that. And some people will be like, oh, why is that? And why are these two together all the time? They're good friends. Yeah, good friends. Right, wink, wink. <laughs> I mean, That's we already good. know where it goes at the end of the season. <laughs> yeah, they're good friends. <laughs> but one thing I do want to state that um, <laughs> the animation style bugs me at first. Because it's not the norm? Yeah, I mean, uh, okay, granted that this is a special, so yeah, I, I can understand but it feels like, how do I put this? Uh, it feels like Hasbro put in work into creating the puppets for this, and they don't want to make the um, all the effort go to waste, so they reuse it. But upon using it again, you get to see that oh, the art style is the movie, but the coloring is TV. Well, I could sort of see them say, we paid good money for these models, we're going to use them all right. I, I totally agree. Reusing assets, if uh, viable or when it's possible, it's always good. So that means you don't waste 
um, money on what you have. But at the same time too, come on, put in some effort into those shadows. Oh, maybe they're borrowing from Boulder Media's advertising company. At least they're not copying and pasting some uh, vectors and stuff off the internet into the comic. <coughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, uh, boys. <clears throat> but anywho, shall we, carry, shall we carry on? Yes. All righty then. So, as the group flies off to Hope Hollows, we get to see, you know, uh, some general road trip games like um, counting bottles of, of walls. That seems to be a tradition. I I, I have to look at the transcript. Does Pinky really say 99 bottles of walls of the wall? Bottles of pop? I I don't know. But um, one of the things is that Twilight wants to see the letter that Rainbow Dash gets. And yeah, uh, they haven't heard about Hope Solos and whatnot. But they're pretty excited. And Rainbow Dash is the guest of honor. So yay, that's cool. And also the festival has Rainbow in it. Sorry, the festival's name has Rainbow in it. So yeah, that's why Rainbow is excited and whatnot. And yeah, this is going to be cool. This is going to be cool and awesome for them. They can't wait to arrive at the town and have a lot of fun. Yay. So they travel for a bit. And when they arrive, or when they nearly arrive, they notice a huge rainbow that's bright. And Rainbow Dash says, oh yeah, don't worry, we'll just pass through this, no problem. Except, say, Rainbow is a billboard, oh no! And the balloon gets caught and they fell to their death. The end. Well, short series. I gotta say, the uh, the finale left something wanting. Oh, yeah. But then, so the Game of Thrones, I'm, I'm numb at this moment. Oh yeah, true. I lied! They teleported down to the ground and they're all safe. Until the balloon landed on them. Oh no! I lied. They're still alive. <laughs> but anywho, um, as they check out where they are, they have arrived at Hope's Hollow and they go to town. And this is a this sorry, this is an interesting setup where they arrive at night, the town looks spooky AF. And they got no idea what to expect because the town looked like a ghost town. Like there's cobwebs, there's mist, the town is so grey. But yeah, I mean, it looks like a horror movie. I, I thought it was something like that. Like uh, there was that one, uh, what should we call this, fanfic or story that involves Apple Bloom going to a haunted village or something like that. Yeah. But unfortunately for us, that did not happen because, well, they arrive in town and meet up with a pony. Uh, said pony is the concierge to the hotel of Hope Hollow and she invites them in and, well, gives them their room, which is one room with three beds. I lied, it's four beds. Well, I lied again because there's five bits in there. So yeah, um, with that, the ponies take five and rest for the night. And I'm going to stop here. So Tara, what do you think? Well, I do like how before when they leave Ponyville to uh, to take off, and when they uh, ask each other, hey, why are we not taking off? And they immediately look at Rarity and, you know, yes, we, we know that back then she'd always overpack a lot of things and stuff. But no, now Rarity's like, I didn't pack a lot this time. Now, we may understand that. But again, I dare say, you know, the newcomers will be like, why are they all like at this form? Why would she pack a lot of things? Because they don't know that. The implication is there with how... Uh, quote unquote snooty she is how fashion conscious she is uh, people will automatically pick up on that and uh, it's kind of serving expectations where oh the fashionista of the group is sure to be packing a lot of unwanted clothing so I mean it's it's fun there like it's pretty smart in terms of comedic effect I'm not really sure what do you think Silver? You, you agree with me or not I think Rarity is portrayed just enough as the fashion horse that we're familiar with the uh, with the trope. I mean, it's it's pretty common in uh, entertainment. You show someone 
very prissy, very uh, interested in feminine things, and she's got like two tons of luggage in her wake. But mostly by by playing to the to the trope. Mm. So it does come across. But anywho, uh, Tara, you were saying. I was gonna say too that I another thing I'm being a nitpick, a bit nitpicky about, but it's like you know they're they're all falling to their doom, and you know yes I understand you gotta build up the tension stuff, but it's like you can all fly, you can just quickly get out and grab them. I mean later on they do, but it's like you know what we're gonna look down and scream as we're falling, and then later on last second we'll go away. But I do like though how before they take off uh, and uh, I guess you could say the Pegasi. As they grab um, everyone else, you can see that Rainbow Dash grabs Applejack and Fluttershy grabs Pinky. And, and it's like, hey, the same voice actress grabs the one they do the two characters of. Oh, uh, yeah, so true. Nah, Rainbow's just going after her future wife. Ba boom. Oh, the shipping. <laughs> hey. I also like to add that uh, I guess what I like, kind of like about this scenario here is that when they get into the village, and they see Petunia, I'm like thinking, uh-oh, there's a evil pony that stole all the magic and he's hiding in the village, kind of like what Starlight Glimmer did. Mm-hmm. And I'm thinking, oh, okay, it's going to be one of these stories again. But then later on, we see that it's not. I won't go into full details later on, but yeah. Yeah, I do agree with that. Like, I had that same feeling there when, oh, this is going to be another Starlight thing, isn't it? Okay, okay. So who's going to be the bad guy? Like, uh-huh. I'm waiting for the reveal. Yep, 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 yep. It's got. It's gonna be Petunia because she is the first character we see. Yeah, foreshadowing, foreshadowing. <laughs> but anywho, um, Silver, what do you think? Well, I think that that fall just highlights how hardcore the main six have become, because they f- go through two near death experiences in one day, and they're just like, "Well, that was inconvenient." <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, our main six has grown, and I-, I forgot to mention this earlier on. Um, this takes place. Uh, I I think somewhere in between season eight or nine, or maybe later on a bit, because the school's already established. Twilight's marking papers and whatnot, and we got no idea. Um, is this near the end of season nine or middle of season nine? Or we forgot the part where Spike has his wings. Yes, the Spike has the wings. I forgot. Yeah, yeah, he flew. He flew in. Yeah, he has wings in this one. Yeah. So this is what somewhere after season 8 or before season 9. It's in between there or so on, I remember. But yes, Silver, you were saying? Well, basically, they're hardcore and walking through the town. Petunia is an interesting character to watch just because of her rather elaborate mane. Big, poofy, and it highlights Toon Boom's animation just the way it bounces and moves with them. It's probably one of the things that makes these characters so fun to watch is that they're they're not static. Their Their bodies move and sway and bounce. So, and it's real complimented how they how much effort they put into it. Yeah, I'm looking at her main now, and oh wow, this main style can never exist during back in the days of what Flash. Well, I don't know. Flash Century could could grow out his main and have it look like that. I'm sure. I mean, Adobe Adobe Flash. <laughs> if that's really his full name, I won't judge. Adobe Flash Century. Yeah, that's what he and he'd like to do in a Twilight ship fic. <laughs> But anywho, shall I continue on? Maybe, or maybe you'll just be like, oh God, why did I let this guy come on this show? I regret everything. Never, never. But anywho, let's continue on. So as we move on, or as the ponies wake up the next day, we see that, hey, uh, this town is strange and everybody else is looking at them strangely they, they comment that hey um why is everyone strange and vice versa they meet up with some sorry they don't meet up um they just walk around and just wonder what the hell is going on like why is everything saturated and certain events happen like we we see two folds uh, looking at the group and hide, we we see a elderly couple um, bickering, and we see that hey, the balloon that they came in is being repaired by a pony, and there's a male unicorn there walking past by them, and he is the mayor. Um, he's glad that the uh, main six are safe 
and sound and just mention uh, when did they came and whatnot and so on. So uh, it seems that this is the mayor. We are introduced to Mayor Sunny Skies. Ah, too bad said name has been taken officially. Ah, oh, boys. Wait, was your OC going to be named Sunny Skies? Oh, no. There's a fanfic called Sunny Skies All Day Long. Um, said Pony was um, Celestia's hidden name when she goes out about town. Oh, yes. What? You're saying fanfic? Oh, yeah. That's the one where Pinky recognizes her. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a really good fanfic. Like, uh, that, that fanfic is just fun. It's a one-shot and it's really fun. But still, uh, that's besides the point. It's neither here or there. So anywho, uh, we are introduced to the mayor, Mayor Sunny Skies, and he shows around or shows the pony around town. Uh, we are introduced to oh my god, characters I got no, <laughs> I don't remember the name. Uh, where, where is um block of names for characters? God dang it. Okay, so we are introduced to Talk Wrench. She is the town's mechanic. She repairs stuff. So yay, there's awesome of her. Uh, but she seems disgruntled, like she doesn't seem happy about doing stuff. Well, honestly, have you ever met someone who was just gruntled? No, no. I, I'd say that person is quite gruntled. What a pleasant fellow. <laughs> uh, but anywho, um, like you mentioned before, Petunia Petals. Uh, she is the town's jack-of-all-trade. And it seems like the mayor has a crush on her. Hmm. Sus, very sus. What, you think he's an imposter? Probably. Should we throw him out the airlock? No, no, no. Too soon, too soon, too soon. So anyway, um, the mayor shows everyone around town. And, well, yeah, we were introduced to certain locations. I- I'm just going to fast forward here because uh, this is just a quote-unquote montage. And subvert expectations because they have a fountain, but the fountain is icky. They have a butterfly farm? No, what was it? Butterfly Park? but uh, Butterfly Garden. Yeah, Butterfly Garden. But the garden is full of people butterflies because real butterflies don't want to come there for reasons. Oh, no. And then there's what? Rainbow Trout catching and release. But it's just a guy in a suit. <laughs> oh, boys. And there's also karaoke. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the... Main Six is just really sus about this guy and straight up asks him, yo dog, what's going on here? What's really going on? And the mayor here just spill the beans and tell them in song what happened before. Interesting song. Very good song. I, I like song. So I'm just going to ask you guys at home to listen to the song when you have the chance because it is a good summary of what's going on. Yes. And I am going to pause here. Here, Silva, what do you think? Well, like now that we've introduced our main cast, now we're introducing all our supporting cast and the central conflict. So, although when he's thinking about our town, our town, <laughs> I I kind of want the main six to just go through a PTSD, a bit of yeah. She's like, oh no, not that song. <laughs> no, run! We're about to be conscripted again. <laughs> run away! Run away! Other than that. I mean, it, it, I like it when we get the color flashback just so we can see this town in full radiance once again. If they saved it all the way until the end, I'm not sure this would have been as engaging a story. Man, it's hard to describe why this is important. So if you don't mind, a very brief story time. All right, go ahead. Years ago, was working at a, at a TV station doing a piece on a guy who photographs a... Uh, waterfall at night where you can actually get a moon uh, inspired rainbow a moon bow and it didn't work that night so we only had photos to rely on but at first we were going to have those photos early on and our producer said oh no move those to the end we need the payoff we need we need to know all this work is towards this goal which made a lot of sense But here, we need to see what it was so the payoff is seeing them reclaim it. You know, we have to see how far they've fallen. And that's what a big part of all this is. That before we can celebrate how they got it back. To show them what happened before was kind of key for this. And at the same time, too, 
uh, it does set up the whole scenario where oh this is our town before but somehow this is all my fault because I messed with the rainbow making machine and it sucked all the color out of the town oh no what have I done and in the back of my mind Petunia is involved she sabotaged the whole machine to suck all the colors out yeah it's her fault I see I see we're anti-Petunias are we yeah it feels that way yeah the, the Petunia is the evil villain but I do like to mention that hey, there's a Big Mac here. He's blue. <laughs> it's Big Mac's cousin. Big blue? Yeah. Or does he sing a lot? Uh, I'm blue. Da boo dee da boo da. <laughs> but but anywho, yes, um let's see. Um the mayor just tells a story in song where uh, every year there's the Rainbow Festival and everybody is happy for the what you call this uh, event and one day he just noticed that oh everybody's a bit grumpy and mm, you know what uh, I, I shall try and modify the rainbow making machine to make it more grand and better but somehow it backfired and it sucked all the color out and everybody seems to well be very very moody yes very mood this place is full of mood yes and Tara what do you think Oh, I, I I like the song. You usually you got songs that talk about, like, uh, how do I say it? Um, backstory songs or whatever. It's always, well, I guess, yes, this is sad. But, I don't know, just, ha- this song just has a nice feeling to it. I don't know how to exactly explain it. <laughs> but the a thing that I con- a bit confuses me is that the mirror is like, oh, this used to be the town... Uh, this used, they used to call this town the end of the rainbow and it's like really does that mean that if I go, if I follow the rainbow I'll end up here <laughs> and they keep calling it like in the song he's like our town at the and like it's silver said you know like pretty much Starlight's town but he says our town at the end of the rainbow so if their town is at the end of the rainbow then what's Starlight's town at <laughs> you don't want to know it's at the end of the world oh but still, but at this point, oh sorry. No, no, no. But but still, um, song is pretty effective. And you think so? Yep. You can kind of tell though that where it's going though, because now that he's uh singing the song, you see how everyone is in color. You see, you can kind of see where it's gonna go at the end. You see this old pony being kind to Big Mac's cousin, and you see this couple baking pies, and you see these two young fillies just flying around. And you see them in black and white now. It's like okay, I think now you see you, you know where this is going. They're gonna try to cheer them up, and things are gonna be back to normal. Yeah, that's that's, that's a step. That's a setup. And the mayor did mention that he called upon them to help them with this. And you know what? I I, I got a question for you guys. Why did it the mayor just ask Princess Celestia for help? Probably because he doesn't know how to get a letter to her directly. Plus. The postal service car- charges an exorbitant rate. Huh. There's a reason Twilight for- forgo it for- to use a dragon. Because <laughs> spikes free labor. Oh. But at the same time, too, like, th- you know what? I'm going to save my quote-unquote plot holes near the end. But anywho, um, shall we carry on? I was going to point out two okay. little things. Right. Uh, I noticed that one thing. I don't know, like, I mean... Okay, I'm not going to go specific. I don't know how... Um, childhood goes or parenthood and stuff like that but when he's explaining about his past uncle and his father stuff like that you can see that the first mayor is Q Mike's a son with two clouds and then Sonny's father is a son with one cloud and then you see Sonny's Q Mike it's just a son with no clouds which is pretty awesome <laughs> I mean, it's just a little minor detail I noticed how it's like, yeah, the first mayor has two clouds and then his father has one cloud now Sonny has no clouds but I do like the idea of the rainbow generator, though. Like, just a machine that makes a rainbow. It's like, yeah, whenever you're bored or if you're playing a special festival, you can just look up in the sky and make a rainbow. <laughs> that, that's cool. That's that's really cool and interesting. But, anywho, shall I continue on? Yes, you can continue on. Alrighty then. So, anywho, after the song and dance and explanation of why things are um, the way they are, the main six says, okay, no problem. We have dealt with tough situations like this before. Take a look at our Wikipedia. We we, we are professionals at dealing with this kind of situation. And Twilight just mentions, okay, 
uh, everybody you got a test to do uh, go do it and don't be sus no venting so as they select their own task we see that okay Pinkie Pie wants to go big stuff and become the official town uh, caterer. Fluttershy goes with her just to make sure she doesn't mess things up. Uh, Rarity goes to become the town uh, fashion pony something and sees a very interesting pony that has really awesome clothing that she goes. And then we see... Twilight and well, Twilight goes to the library to do research and stuff just to find magics and whatnot. And Applejack goes with the mayor to help the well, help with certain things like repair. And Rainbow Dash, well, just flies. Yes, as we go with the ponies, we see that Applejack is with Talk Ranch, uh, helping her do well some work like try to fix the cloud no try to fix the rainbow um, billboard that she or their group broke and we see on the hill uh, twilight trying to figure things out like okay if magic is responsible for this why don't we try to do magic uh, she tries to shoot a beam to try to restore or try to nullify whatever is going on, but it does not work. And Rainbow Dash just says, Okay, you know what? I'm Rainbow Dash and I'm going to Sonic Rain Boom this town and see if it gets the color back or not. And it seems that it doesn't work. I have to point something out. The Sonic Rain Boom in this one feels a bit lackluster. Like, it doesn't have that boom. You know what I mean? Yeah, it should be tearing the roofs off houses. Yeah. Ponies go flying by. NTM! NTM! <laughs> uh, but anywho, what they're doing they didn't work. We see there's two young fillies and colts uh, flying about and getting into some accident. Rainbow Dash says, are you guys okay? And, well, uh, we introduced to... Oh, man. <laughs> uh, name, 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 name. Uh, okay. Pickle and... Barely Barrel? Is that what your name is? I don't recall ever hearing their names. Shows what terribly important characters they were. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. But anywho... Uh, hang on, let's see here. Seems that way. But anywho, um, they are the uh, twin Pegasi. They are a big fan of Rainbow Dash, and they have their, what you call this, fan club for her. So, yay. Uh, you know, uh, this strokes Rainbow Dash's ego and she kind of gets to know them a bit. And Rainbow Dash says, yeah, yeah, you guys are pretty awesome. Uh, with a few practice and uh, work, uh, hard work, you guys can probably join the Wonder Bolts. So, yeah, why, why don't you, why don't I train you guys and see how it goes? And with that, the ponies or the kids are really excited and happy and they fly off with Rainbow Dash and while that's going on we see the windmill somehow getting its color back oh I wonder why that is so strange I sense much sarcasm in you Norman <laughs> a bit so okay guys um give yourself to the snark side <laughs> so okay guys uh, I, I am going to um fast forward a bit because uh, things are just going to be set up because okay this is setting this uh, this is setting up for this and this is setting up for that so do you guys mind if I just speed things along have at it warp speed yeah go ahead so um, I was a bit wrong with the timing but yes Applejack wants to fix the rainbow with uh, what's her name talk wrench and talk wrench says what is this what is in this for you what's your game what's your playing at and Rainbow Dash just sorry, uh, and Apple just just says, "You broke it, you buy it, so I'm gonna fix it." And yeah, let's work on this. Uh, Talk Ranch is surprised by this attitude, and she is humble. Uh, she's not really humble, but she is proud of her work because Applejack says the work that she put in the what you call this 
basket that she did was pretty awesome, especially for an oaf pony with no fingers. So yeah, that, that's going to be difficult. And we see with that, the, a plank of wood got its, its color back. <clears throat> Rarity goes to the store, or the clothes store, and meets up with Kerfuffle. That's her name, right? Uh, yes, the fa- the fan favorite for this. Yeah, also she's disabled, which is really interesting. I find this very, very fascinating. But anywho, uh, we meet up with Kerfuffle. Kerfuffle is a fashion pony in... Um, uh, what was this town name? Uh, this town name is called Hope Hollow. Yes, and not to get mixed up with Sire's Hollow next door. Yeah, also with oh man, there's a lot of Hollow, Hollow, Hollow. But anywho, um, Kerfuffle here is the fashionista for the town. She does a lot of work, but uh, is not confident in her work, so she displays a lot of other ponies' work, especially Rarity and. Um, you know, add a bit of flair to it with stuff. But she also works in monochrome. That means no colors. So how she pass, how she get be, uh, past this is just to imagine the colors and how they look. So that is really cool. But Norman, I, I'm afraid I must issue one correction. Oh. Uh, monochrome is not uh, is not an absence of colors. It is one color. Ah, sorry, my bad. Saturated then. Well, uh, she works in saturated, or if it's lacking any color, then it's desaturated. Ah, all right then. <clears throat> My bad. Sorry, but you do. I, I do wonder what happened if we play around in Photoshop and play with the saturation. Do you think the color will exist? Heck, I've got Photoshop on my computer. Let me grab a screenshot and mess with it for a sec. While you do that, I am going to carry on. So, anywho. Um, Rarity invites Kerfuffle to be her co or assistant for the uh, fashion festival thingy, and Kerfuffle says, "Sign me up. I'm in. I'm in." And they work together on projects, and we get to see the hat change colors. Oh, I got these color back. So, hmm, I wonder what's going on. Twilight goes to the library and sees books. Books abound. And uh, what you would call this Petunia says, impress, impressive, eh? We, we have a lot of books. We have a lot of awesome books. And Twilight is just really happy. And Twilight asks, where's the magic section? And there's a lot. And she's going to go to work. Uh, this one is going to be fun because it's Pinkie Pie and Fluttershy. And they go to the bakery, but the bakery is closed. So... They walk a bit and they meet up with um, the elderly couple, two unicorns from, um, well, they, they look snooty. But anywho, uh, one is carrying a well, Actually, they do for... say where they're from. They say they're from Manhattan, but they decide to move here because they say Manhattan is uh, full of rude ponies and everyone just stays inside all day. <laughs> I mean, that's what people are doing nowadays, but you know. For different reasons, for different reasons. Yep. <laughs> But yeah, uh, I was going to get to that later on, but they didn't really say out out at the very beginning. But anywho, um, yeah, uh, what Tyra says is true. So the couple is carrying a pie along, and Pinkie Pie tries the pie and says, "Oh God, the pie is terrible. What what is wrong with your pie?" And yeah, they go to their house to do some explaining. Uh, explaining, but before we can go for that, we see Rainbow Dash. Uh, asking the kids to fly and show her what they got. And they are talented, but they lack coordination and discipline. And Rainbow Dash just says, yeah, you guys are good, but it takes time for me to be awesome like me. So let me show you what I can do. By the way, Rainbow Dash in a beanie hat is awesome. Well, I, I just, can we pause to appreciate the supreme irony of Rainbow Dash lecturing someone on discipline. <laughs> I guess, I guess. Uh, let's just say that after becoming a Wonder Bolt, she became a lot more well disciplined. And, uh, well, let's just say that she respects hard work. I, I think she does that way before. Oh. By the way, I, I took a screenshot and very low quality 
and bumped up the saturation way far. And yeah, uh, I I see it kind of works. So yeah, I get the sense that they animated this everything and then toned down the saturation. Oh yeah. And but it looks awful on my case because it's a JPEG. Yeah, you don't have the um, official file, but that that means that. The way that they animated this is pretty cool. Like, in a sense... Okay, you know what? I'm going to hold my tongue until we reach the end because this is um, one <laughs> of those things that we need to talk near the end. All right, anyhow. Um, yeah, thank you, Silver. Uh, but anywho, uh, let's see. Rainbow Dash Discipline, fly, fly, fly. Uh, kids are impressed. Wants to be like her. Yes. So, the, the kids fly off with Rainbow Dash and we see a patch of grass that the kids fly by get its color back. Hmm, I wonder what's going on. That's very strange. But anywho, uh, getting back to Pinkie Pie and Fluttershy, they go to... um, What are the names? Me forget. Uh, let's see here. There's so many names. Mr. and Mrs. Huffington? Really? Oh, wow. Oh, boy. It's okay. So anyway, Mr. and Mrs. Huffington. So they brought Pinkie and Fluttershy to their garden and they see that hey um the apricots in their f- house are not ripe yet because well they, they can't really tell because of the color the color is so desaturated so pinky just says hey what about that uh what you call this um apricot over there those look good because they're huge and they say that, nah, they, they don't belong to us. They belong to this one crazy old man called uh, Moody, Moody Root. That's a mood. <laughs> yes. So, um, Pink Fluttershy does her magic and somehow managed to ask him to share his apricots with the bakers. And, well... Now they're baking. Yay! So I'm going to... Did I get everything? Yes, I'm going to pause here. So... Silver? Was it? Yes? Yeah. Okay, Silver, what do you think? Yes, that's my that's my name. The fact that you have to ask after all this time just hurts me <laughs> so badly. Oh, what did you do, Norman? I'm sorry. I'm very, I'm very sensitive about all this. I'm sorry. Steve... Yeah, well, now you've read my wiki. <laughs> Still don't understand the lot, the rhetoric behind that one. Oh, well. <laughs> Anywho, uh, so basically, as this is going, you sort of realize, hey, there's no, there's no one working against them in the classic villain sense. That there's nothing pushing them, like you know, oh, you're in danger from the evil so and so of Mount Da Da Da. That's the scariest place of all. So, I just think to myself, okay, this is clearly not uh, an adventure based around an external antagonist. The antagonism is plain to see in the town's interaction, as everybody is just getting mad at one another. But then you see, okay, all of these supporting characters exist to give one of the main six a chance to shine. When you make uh, Moody Roots as cranky as possible... Uh, so a kind pony like Fluttershy can, can counteract it and two flyers to celebrate Rainbow Dash and so on and so forth. It makes a lot of sense, but at the same time, I guess part of me thought with the special and even that shot of Twilight with the rainbow wings, like, oh, that's the climactic triumph over the evil force. Oh, wait, no, it's, it's just for fun. Okay. <laughs> I, I I don't know. I mean, when I first watched this, I still had hope that okay, there's a big villain, the reveal going to be coming out later, and yeah, uh, Petunia is going to be really rocking it because the 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 feel of the special feels like uh season four or five, mm-hmm. yeah. So it feels like the premiere for one of those seasons where okay, you're introduced to Starlight. Oh, she, this is what she does, and blah 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 blah, but. Yeah, I mean, it feels that way, and we're just waiting for that turn. We're just waiting for that reveal. But, anywho, uh, anything more to add, Silver? Well, it's just fun. It's fun to see these characters interact, don't get me wrong. Uh, 
But then you're, you, as you've been hinting, as, as others, uh, color comes back just as they're doing something fun. You're like, okay, I, I get it now. You have power, friendship, joy, brings color to the world. Can, um, can we get to that realization? Okay, I get the realization. I can't believe you're not realizing it. Why are you not realizing this? Oh, boys. But anyway, uh, Tara, what about you? Uh, I was actually, I'm actually agreeing with so I was, because I was going to mention that. Yes, we know where this is going now. We, like, it is nice for all these characters interacting with each other. Although I'm surprised that the, um, the Huffingtons, they, uh, they allowed Pinky and Fluttershy to come with them to their place. Especially Pinky. I mean, especially when she terrorized them with this face. Oh, God. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. He's like, this is terrorizing. It's like, yeah, okay, that you're just literally trying to scare them off. They're like, no, we're gonna let you in, we're gonna let you follow us to our house now. <laughs> yeah, that's it. Honestly, I think I think they're getting bringing her to their house to get her some eye drops for that clear infection. <laughs> <laughs> but like someone said, you do know where this is going now. You know that there's no big villain, and it's like, yeah, do, I like, do you really need to make this for an hour long? We know this is going. Can't you just shorten it a bit and be like, hey, I noticed this right now. But no, they just keep dragging along. And I know it's a, I know it's the one little nitpicky moment, but I know that um, when Fluttershy is trying to convince convince uh, Moody Root to um, give the apricots, I noticed that there's one part of the tree that's cut off, but you still see the shadow behind it. <laughs> uh, minor details, minor details. Yeah, I know it's minor details. It's just I always look, so there'd be times where I look in the background and I notice these things. Yeah, besides, some people make a whole YouTube channel off minor details. <laughs> Oh, uh, boys. But any... Besides, haven't haven't you ever heard of phantom limb syndrome? Oh, yeah, I, I've heard of it. I never did. This is phantom tree limb sim, uh, symptoms. Yeah, it's phantom pain. Hmm. When a person has, has unfortunately lost a limb, uh, the, the nerves still send signals, and you could swear it's still there, or perhaps it itches, or... And that's why sometimes people reach out of habit not realizing that the limb is not there jamie lannister in game of thrones might be an example mm-hmm. I, you, okay here's a funny backstory for me uh, you want to know where i learn about phantom limb if you say the venture brothers oh no no this is older okay i am weasel and i are baboon oh yes the where he broke a phantom limb <laughs> yeah <I know. laughs> it's Dumb. Well, I learned it from there, but at the same time, top up with um, watching some anime or something like that. Yeah, but still, it was just so dumb from where I learned that phrase. <laughs> as long as that's the big takeaway from I Am Weasel, instead of just focusing on Iron Baboons, <laughs> took us. Uh, yeah, but, but anyhow, um, uh, carrying on. So we meet up with Rain Twilight in the library. She's doing research and whatnot, but she still couldn't find the answer. But something distracts her, and she goes into the secret lair. And we see the mayor uh, trying to write up a, a dictation note or a speech. And this surprised me a bit because, oh, there's a hidden room. Oh, he's the bad guy. Oh. <laughs> But no, no, no. It's just a normal room. And Twilight noticed, yo, um, all of the pictures are in color. Oh, wow. Okay. That, that's interesting. And the mayor just mentioned that, yeah, some memories or happier memories are still in color. And the mayor just says, yeah, um, every festival record is in this room from the very beginning. And we see Petunia. Oh, Petunia knows about this room. She's the bad guy. Ah, You've just got it in for Petunia. <laughs> I know. What do you have against Petunia there, Norman? Because she was the first villager that meets up with the good guys. She's she's bound to be the bad guy. Ah. <laughs> I'm just saying, you know, it's not like Petunia's a giant pansy or anything. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, you're making her sound like a giant pansy, don't you know? <laughs> oh, oh well, don't you know? Yeah, but 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 anywho, but anywho. Whew. okay, let's see. Mm, Petunia comes in. The the mayor blushes and walks out of there because she's shy. And Twilight just looks around and talks to Petunia. And 
um, Petunia shows some pictures about what happened, uh, the history of what you want to call this, uh, the town, and Petunia explains that okay, because of this machine, uh, the mayor kind of uh, soup it up but accidentally drain all the color out of the town. So now Twilight figures, okay, if I can repair this picture or if I can repair this machine and use it somehow, we can probably make the town great again. Yeah. So Twilight goes to, well, not really, but uh, we, we cut to the town outside and the rainbow billboard is fixed. Um, the mayor is impressed, and um, so is everybody else. We, we see a cult here being really happy because uh, he asked parents if they could go to the fair, and parents said yes, and now his color is coming back. And you know what? There's already a red flag. Why, why did the parent notice something about that? Well, they, apparently this town is not big on observation. No. Nope. Yeah. <laughs> You know, the little kid could be like, Mom, Dad, my hair, is, uh, my hair color's back. And then they report to the mayor. And the mayor will be, report to the main six. And the main little six will be like, wonder why. And then, boom, problem solved. But no, you got to drag the story along while we all sit down, pointing at the TV, going, how are you so blind? <laughs> oh, issue, issue, is it wrong? Yeah, this is the one issue I have. <laughs> well, I'll get to that when it's my part. I mean, uh, I have it in for Petunia, but you... If, mm. <laughs> are, are, are you mad that they spell color with a U? No, I'm mad. You have something against Canadians. Hey, you forget, I'm part of the Commonwealth too. But, anywho... <laughs> I, I'm from America. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> but, anywho... Um, as Twilight and Petunia comes along, the, the man notice, yo, what's that in your bag? Oh, wow, wow that, that crap. Uh, get it away and destroy it. Um, and Twilight just says, no, 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 we, we got to fix this up and uh, make sure it w- it's working again so I can put magic into it and somehow I can bring the magic color back to town. So yeah, I'm, I'm going to work that part. And the mayor says, okay, um, Okay, if that's true, we, we need to find a way to fix this. And somehow Applejack says, I, I know a pony that knows how to fix stuff. And Talk Ranch here says, Okay, um, I, I can give it a whirl. And well, we move on to. Well, you know what? Um, I'm just going to do a very quick synopsis here. Uh, we go back to Rain. Sorry, uh, Pinkie Pie and Fluttershy. Uh, the bakers bake a lot of big goods. Uh, Rudy, uh, Rudy Mo- Moody Root here enjoys and says we need to promote this to the town. Let's go, let's go, let's go. Uh, we go back to the town and we see Talk Rancher managed to fix the machine and Twilight here does magic but uh, Applejack noticed something, but you know what? Applejack's background pony, so we don't really pay attention to her. Oh, that, oh now you're anti-Applejack. First. <laughs> it, you know what? It's Earth Ponies. <laughs> My OC... Norman's, hey. got it, Norman's got it in for the Earth Ponies, doesn't he? My OC's Earth Pony. I'm an Earth Pony. No, that's just self-loathing, then. <laughs> but anywho, um, Twilight does the magic thingy, and it doesn't work. Oh, no. Twilight wants to report that she... Did she fail and whatnot? Applejack here tries to tell Twilight what's going on and whatnot, but it's interrupted by the group, and we get to see a Rainbow Festival is coming back again and whatnot. Yeah, 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 yeah. And um, everybody's coming in, showing stuff and whatnot, and Applejack just says, "Twilight, this look, it's working, but yeah, you get to figure something out." And with that. Twilight goes back to the library to uh, check a few things. And you know what? She's wrong. Um, the pictures are out of order. Uh, the, whatchamacallit, the color was already out because, well, there's this magic called Hope Magic or Hopeless Magic. It's because of all the town being rude and whatnot. And 
being distanced from one another. And because of that, all the color saturates out of the town. And what the explosion of the rainbow making machine was the last straw to make everybody lose their color. So yeah, uh, it seems that the color is coming back one by one and it's not the mayor's fault. So the mayor makes a good speech about how everybody is here and there, they should work together, they should say hi and whatnot and be polite to one another. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and then with that, we get to see the color coming back slowly to town. I, I think the only colorless pony is just the mare and Petunia. Uh, and the mare proposed to Petunia on stage and they get their color back. Yay! And with that, uh, yeah, the, the town is happy. The town is back to normal. And they have a song near the... Oh, they, have a, they have another song. And the song is really awesome. And we get to see Twilight jumping into the air. Um, revealing her rainbow wings that was in the gif that was shown before. Ugh. That was... The, the payoff was not there. But anywho, uh, song was a bit too long for me and the color matching ponies was a bit way not cool for me. And after song... Not, not cool? Yeah, it, it freaks me out, man. Like... The color of the ponies, like oh man, that, that that's just just freaky. Hmm. But anywho, um, after all that, everybody gets their color, and the main six get out of town, <laughs> and the episode ends. So, Silver, what do you have to say, man? Well, let's see here. Uh, one, I guess Norman is fuming that the House of Petunia will will continue <laughs> to another bloodline. <laughs> I, I, I still don't know why. I find it interesting that when Twilight unfurls her wings, the stitching goes away. So that it actually looks like it's her natural wings. But when she folds them up, I guess all the stitching's on one side. It's kind of funny. I mean, this is just fun. But why are they leaving as the celebration's going? You don't, you don't leave in the middle of a party. And, and yet we would see this uh, again with the Cutie Mark Crusaders on... Uh, uh, celebration day uh at mount eris they help teramar out and everyone's having a party and they say we'll see you later and they don't even enjoy the party <laughs> that's how you do it what? bro you get in you yeah. get well known you drop the mic and get out yeah, that sounds like a terrible plan who does that plan twilight and gang <laughs> that's terrible i never say it was good also i will say during the chorus where everyone's celebrating the return of color uh, you know, it's really rough when suddenly it's you see the character models being almost exactly the same. I get it, cost saving measure and time saving measure, but you're kind of drawing attention to the to the stock character aspect, which maybe brings down the chorus a little. Yeah. And yeah, I, I I don't like the color, um, the the same color for the ponies, like uh, blue coat. Blue mane, blue eyes. I, I know what you're trying to do. It's for the song. But the colors, like, oh, God. You, you get us. It, it bothers me. It bothers me a lot. Well, I mean, it, it'd be fine if at least one of those opponents uh, was singing, I'm blue. Double D, double die. <laughs> yeah. Double D. <laughs> uh, but still, uh, any anything you want to add, Silver? Well, just that it, I mean, it is fun. I, okay, I'm a shipper. I, I'm a shipper. I do love seeing the marriage proposal. Yes, I think that was very adorable. Yeah, I agree. Super, it's super sweet. Oh, you agree, except that it had to be Petunia Pelia. No, 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 no. See, I was playing it up because at first I thought it was Petunia, but after watching it through, nah, she's not the bad guy. But still, it was fun to kind of guess it. Well, I, I, I too am playing it up, but let me keep going, Norman. <laughs> you know what? No, I think Norman's been playing too much Among Us, and he's finding Petunia very I sus. I know. <laughs> then you throw her into deep space. It's like you're such a moron. <laughs> Petunia was not the alien. Curses! Oh no! Who was it? It was the twins. Actually, it turns out it was Pinkie Pie. Da, da, da. <laughs> Dumb. 
But any who anything more to that, Silva? Nope, nothing else on my All end. All right, Terrell, what about you? I I really like this short. It was just my thing of with the ponies being so blind where they don't notice the color coming in. It's like, you know, let's start off with the the twins when they flew over the patch of grass or when they flew by the windmill. You don't think that as maybe, you know, they're flying around, they quickly see the color and be like, whoa, wait a second. Look, the color's coming back. Or when that little, when that little Pegasus got his hair color back and you think, oh, my, my hair color's coming back. Mom, my hair color's coming back. And they tell the the mayor and the mayor tells the twilight and they figure it out because, you know, they have to make the plot keep going. And then once they finally notice that the color is coming back. That's when everything starts coming back. Yeah, I mean it, it, it's hope, but <laughs> one of the few things that kind of like, oh, I see. It's oh, the town is affected with hope magic. Yeah, so you're telling me that certain emotion plays a part in terms of what you can and can't do. So wait, there's hope magic now. So if if there's a sense of hopelessness. The magic all drains out. So what happened in season nine? That didn't really happen. Well, they, mm, yeah, they were being mean to one another. But this, that was more spe- uh, speciesism. I don't know. It would be racism. Is there different pony races? Yeah. yeah. So there's tolerance magic too, and the tolerance magic was going out. Yeah, and then the Windigos came because of that. Oh God, no. <laughs> The, the truth is, Equestria needs like just a lot of Prozac because they're one bad day away from the apocalypse. <laughs> Always. Yeah. Oh, man. I feel like, though, that they're trying to be shot down on purpose, though, because as they're leaving the village, they start <laughs> up the fireworks. <laughs> oh, no, Princess Twilight didn't pay the bills. It's, it's <laughs> like, you guys leave as the festival is, like, actually starting they finally got their color back you don't want to you know be there happy for that instead they just decide to leave and it's like they're leaving us <laughs> shoot them down and they shoot the fireworks uh, they haven't paid their bill <laughs> but one thing I do notice that is uh, that we're already numb to it is that nobody gives nobody recognizes Princess Twilight nobody cares about Princess Twilight Princess it's just like Oh look, it's Princess Twilight. Oh yeah, okay, okay, children, don't look at her. Just, just, just look away. Just look away, and don't just pretend she's not there. Well, what you, what can you say? I mean, for a long time, nobody recognized Princess Twilight. Yeah, but this is already what well known. She has she atab- she established herself as a educator. She has a school. She is one of the uh, four princesses and whatnot. Like people already know. But no, man, no, no. That, that's out the window. But anywho, Tara, anything, anything more to add? No, just, you know, it's a very nice short, but once you know where the plot's going, it just kind of takes forever to get to it. But it's decent. You know, it's just, I'd say watch it once. Maybe if you're bored, go back to it again, but no. Yeah, okay. It's decent. <laughs> As for me, um, this episode, or this special was okay. It was a lot of fun. Uh, it was entertaining, but very forgettable. Uh, one of the few plot holes that I noticed here is that, okay, town is not great. What happens if somebody moves? Will they still be dis- desaturated and whatnot? See, this is one of those things where, okay, they move. Are they still going to be gray? There's a risk. Well, what makes you don't notice that there's a there's a moats around the whole town no one can leave this is this is the pony hotel california <laughs> such a lovely place such a lovely place such a lovely place oh man yeah but, but other than that um i i do like the one they got um or the prosthetic pony leg like that is how do i say daring is there anything uh, behind Kerfuffle, like is she, um, one of those what you would call this, um, Make a Wish Foundation kids? Not that I'm aware. Not that I know. Because, like, how do I put this? The last time that we got a disabled pony was in se- one of the seasons where uh, the pony was riding a wheelchair and whatnot, and that was. Uh- sorry? Yeah, that uh, that was in Tradia. 
It was voiced by Sylvia Nicholas. Yeah, and he is a Make a Wish Foundation kid. So that is one of those things where, oh wow, that is cool and fascinating. So I'm I'm just trying to scroll down the wiki page to look for um who named Pony here. Kerfuffles, yes. But I can't find anything on her. Well, unfortunately I don't see a lot of entries. I mean, fans really, I think, were charmed by Kerfuffle. Maybe because of the artificial leg. That's one of the pool. She's enjoyed a great deal of, of artwork. But you know, maybe one of the weirdest takeaways from the Rainbow Road trip is how little the fans tried to imagine life after the ponies, uh, the main six departed, or uh, latch on these characters. In seasons one and two, you dropped a brand new character. People went to town envisioning new stories for that character, return scenarios, where are they now, maybe an ask blog. Mm. The deeper we went into the show, though, I think the less there were, shall we say, there was greater emphasis on backstory and maybe returning characters. Suddenly fans didn't feel compelled to uh, to make stories. They didn't feel they had to fill things in. It was more, oh, I'll wait and see if the show comes back to this character. Yeah, feels like that. And I don't know. I mean, it feels like the show... Or defend, yeah. I, I think it feels like the fans have already passed that, and um, how do you put it? It's it's kind of the sign of the end days for the show. Oh, Dorman, you get you don't get don't go all uh, mind prophecy on us. Nah, man, you know I always love the show. The show will never die. But it is twenty twenty. If everyone goes like, we're all gonna die, it's twenty twenty. Nah, man. Then if, if if somebody says that we have to do the airplane skit, where you, you know the one, where they all slap each other. Yeah, especially that one pony. <laughs> I don't know. I I I call them something the, the Leslie Nielsen pony. <laughs> Just want you all to know, we're counting on you. <laughs> but anywho, but anywho, um, with that episode ends. Okay, yeah, yeah. Well, it was a lot of fun reviewing this. So, Silver, what are you going to do next week? Well, we're going to return to the realm of the comics for Puppy! Yay! We're going to be looking at MLP issue 82, starring Rarity and Cerberus. Cerberus? Over here in the States, we usually pronounce it Cerberus. Oh, Cerberus. <laughs> Sorry, I, I, I can't help but think of Sergeant Frog when you say that. Kero, 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 kero. Yes. So next week, next week's going to be a fun one. Next week's going to be a fun one. Ah, oh, boys. That that one has a lot of things to. Anyway, you know I'm gonna hold my tongue. Anyway, um, yes, next week will be a lot of fun. But anywho, if you guys have any questions, concerns, or suggestions for the show, you can contact us at abshowgmail dot com. You can also catch us on Pony Drive. Sorry, no. Uh, you can also reach us on the Twitters. The show's Twitter account is at MBS Show, and my personal Twitter account is at Norman Sanzo. Uh, Silver, where can the good people catch you? You can catch me on both Twitter and DeviantArt under MLP Silver Quill. You can also support my comics, my videos, and and other works uh, through Patreon and Ko-fi, just doing a search for Silver Quill. And on YouTube, a search for Silver Quill, MLP Silver Quill, or After the Fact, will produce something, and ye can find me. And uh, on Wednesdays with Equestry Daily, I'll be, po- I'll be posting uh, reviews and editorials. Awesome. And... Tara, where can the good people find you? Well, the good people can find me on Facebook, DeviantArt, Twitter, or YouTube under the name Tortero1324, or they can just do a Google search, and I'll be on all platforms, including my Patreon page. Awesome, awesome. And also, please subscribe and rate us on iTunes, YouTube. Don't forget to press the bell icon to stay up to date, and also Stitcher Radio. And also, like our Facebook page. You can also catch us on PonyLive.com. Links are in the show notes. If you'd like to support the show, you can do so at patreon.com slash MBS show. With every support, you get a weekly access to review discussion podcast, exclusive and deleted content, and a huge thank you from me. Talking about thank yous, I would like to thank Lucky Knight, my stuff like, and also Tristan. Thank you so much, guys. You are awesome. So, anyway, I have been Norman Sanzo. I am the Silver Queen. And I am the Torterra. 
Maybe you guys catch you next week with another fun episode of the NBS Show. See ya. Norman, it's off to tolerance education for you. You gotta work on your anti petunianism Yep, you, you gotta work on that, Norman. <laughs> Never! But Tonya is evil! I feel it! She's evil! No, we gotta book you an appointment with Dr. Silverquill. Yes, welcome, we will, we will help make you more tolerant and loving through electroshock therapy! Ooh, kinky!